Time is a precious commodity, and we rarely have enough of it. We've been able to wade in the initial excellence of Naughty Dog's latest adventure, but also come back again and again to further ponder its qualities, poke at its multiplayer, and finally appraise the complete package. The Last of Us hosts a lengthy story glued together by its grounded scenarios, subtle interfused game systems, and a dazzling world turned real through its inhabitants and the changing seasons. But after this, I owe you nothing. The Last of Us is a demanding, immediate experience, focusing on the sliver of humanity exposed when people are up against the darkness inherent within. This is a zombie tale which strips away the mystery of infection, leaving a smoldering aftermath, with your sense of hope quashed by the severity of survival. As Joel, a 20-year veteran of the end of the world, you'll trek through miles of treacherous terrain from Boston to the beyond with the young Ellie in tow, your story mixed up with a rotating cast of friends, freaks, and castaways. The characters, whether they're with you or against you, are rounded and well-defined. Ellie and Joel's relationship fits the curve of the familial. The young hothead walking the treacherous line between smartass and precocious without falling into snark, and Joel never sinks completely into bottomless gruffness. You make every shot count. The easy and enjoyable Spielberg-esque style of dialogue previously employed by Naughty Dog has turned grittier, but it's not without the occasional light touch. The balance between tension and blessed reprieve delicately sways until an affecting plot sucker punch sets off a convincing, slow-burning Armageddon. Even running through detritus and reflecting on the remnants of the past will color the story and the world, with the scattered collectibles giving substance to an overall cohesiveness. Locations serve as more than scenery and places to take cover, but the surprising amount of variation and consideration through the not-so-abandoned buildings you'll tiptoe through. <laughs> Enduring the journey takes nerves and a steady approach. Resources are few, though you'll find fortune is on your side in the most dangerous situations. A gunshot can end a confrontation, but is just as likely to alert others to your presence. Your sense of sound can help set up an ambush, but stealth can fail in even the most meticulously planned strike from the shadows. Ready-made weapons like bottles and brick are quickly drafted to your cause. A quick distraction or a brutal smash shows the elegant versatility of this hinge system, hovering between acting sly and acting out. You guys are pretty good at this stuff. The infected overwhelm you, maybe even killing you in a single lunge. Still, human dirtbags are just as malevolent, firing bullets from behind cover or swinging baseball bats from the periphery. No matter what situation you're in, the sense of danger never eases up. There's a constant tug of war between vigilance and recklessness, with no single strategy offering true salvation as both your options and opponents evolve. Joel's ability to hunker down and listen for his assailants, or perhaps victims, gives the player an edge, tracing outlines of attackers through the walls, putting an emphasis on approaching situations with a deft hand, and lining the upcoming action with a tactical impulse. Stalking through the hollow shell of burnt-out civilization necessitates exploration and tactical choices. There are no timeouts, forcing you to craft items or heal yourself in the thick of battle, leaving you vulnerable while adding to the immediacy and conjunction of setting and systems. Overpowering your aggressors with molotovs, nail bombs, and shivs driven into jugulars reveal Joel's quotidian inner Batman, but going all out could leave your inventory depleted for the next encounter. The game's ecosystem is a constant, narrow vibrato between empowerment and disadvantage. As familiar dangers are woven into new arrangements, your choices in improving your equipment and skill let Joel maintain a slight but ever-increasing edge. Joel's uncertain, queasy aim will steady, but only after a deep-rooted appreciation over making each bullet count. Multiplayer has you picking a side as you play out a metagame over 12 simulated weeks. Your main goal is to gather resources to build and maintain your population of survivors with sub-objectives that can raise or decimate your population. The four-on-four -four bouts give your team either a pool of shared lives or allow every team member one life per round, and foster an emphasis on teamwork within the familiar framework of standard deathmatch. Aesthetic and gameplay unlocks allow for customization and some sense of personal progress, but you'll always need to proceed with caution. One less straggler to worry about! Resources can be gathered for crafting molotovs and the like, while scrap can be exchanged for more ammo, armor, or more powerful weapons. Fallen enemies also drop spoils, and if you can hold on to your resources until the end of the match, they'll be tallied into supplies to sustain your survivors. Aside from killing foes, you can contribute to your cause by healing, crafting, and spotting enemies, but being paired with particularly bad or unsupportive players can wreak havoc on your personal infrastructure. I gotcha. 
Thanks to often dire consequences to the metagame and the need to rely on others, the stress that defines the single-player journey is present here, even as the visuals lose some of their immersive detail. Cross-map sniping feels overly dominant on some maps, though the variety of weapons and the reigning silence of the bow and arrow bring the action to a more intimate range. It's only when you run out of bullets and start trading blows like Rock'em Sock'em Robots that any clumsiness starts to show, a mild mood-breaking anomaly you'll also find in the single-player game, and striking with a stealth shiv is much easier said than done. Online survival is interesting enough that you're likely to make your way through three virtual months of struggle, but the unique motifs of the single player only occasionally grace this fun and ambitious, if not exactly flashy, multiplayer experience. The Last of Us accomplishes so much. This is a work which shines so brightly and in so many ways that it can be startling to encounter shortcomings. Moments of awkwardness do occur, the tension and dread of kill or be killed blunted by moments where the fact that it's all a game is made glaringly obvious. But there's no question that The Last of Us belongs on a very short list of games that will define this decade. It's a rare gem that subtly sculpts feeling and atmosphere without having to reinvent the way we play games. From the slow burn of the intricate opening hours that unfold into something reflecting the qualities of the best stories, heartaching, tense, but also humane and funny, and also the best games, where it punishes foolhardy action and rewarding both quick thinking and learning with its ever-changing scenarios. The Last of Us shows that the future of games need not be jarring messes of complexity with the codependency on apps and a horde mode. Something that plays well, makes you think, and keeps you playing to the end is without a doubt worth taking in. I was never a big fan of these things. See all of our shows and game reviews now on the brand new GT app on Xbox Live and the GT Originals iOS app too.